effective ministers of the word. Under his leadership, several ministers were sponsored by the church for further studies, particularly in the field of theology and religious studies, both in Ghana and abroad. The team of lecturers so developed enhanced the training of lay leaders across the country and ministers' wives training at the church's conference center at Agogo in Asantiach in Ghana. Annual themes and lectures were also introduced to equip ministers and the church in general. It is due to this drive and many other initiatives in advancing education, spiritual and intellectual growth that Apostle Dr. Michael Kwabna Intumi, the late, would most be remembered in the annals of the university. On behalf of the sitting chancellor, Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the governing council, management, staff, and students of the university. We say goodbye to our departed former chancellor. We shall see him at the appearance of our Lord Jesus. May his soul rest in perfect peace. I received the news of the death of Apostle Dr. Michael Kwabnan to me with considerable sadness. It is not often that it can be said of someone that he or she has finished his or her life's work and with distinction. But we can certainly say that about the man we are gathered here to celebrate fourth chairman of the Church of Pentecost from 1998 to 2008. He was well known for his discipline, honesty, and integrity. He was an outstanding servant of the church, the Ghanaian people, and of the public interest. His objective was always the advancement of Ghana. And even in his days of Ill, Ill health, he continued to make critical interventions in our nation's discourse. He leaves a big void, not only in the Church of Pentecost, but also in the wider Christian space as he was a constant source of good, rich Christian counsel. He deserves the befitting farewell being accorded him today in recognition of his social and spiritual services to the growth of democratic Ghana. He will be sorely missed. My wife, Rebecca, and I extend our deepest condolences to his loyal companion and wife, Martha, his children, the Church of Pentecost, and all the people of Ghana who have suffered a great loss in the departure of their faithful servant. God bless him. May his soul rest and abide in the bosom of the Almighty until the last day of the resurrection, when we shall meet again. Amen. Chairman, I present the tribute by the General Council of the Church of Pentecost in honor of Apostle Dr. Michael Kobner into me. God's chosen general,
Apostle Dr. Michael Kobnoin to me, whose mortal remains lie before us this morning, conquered nations with the gospel, broke barriers, enriched the unreached, built bridges with various churches and para-church organizations, set the pace to elevate the Church of Pentecost to a higher level, thereby gaining national and global prominence. Today, as he ends his divine assignment on earth, we cannot help but salute him for the exploits the Lord used him to do. Trained as a professional teacher at the Atibubu College of Education, Apostle, D. M. Apostle Dr. M. K. to me was called into full-time ministry of the Church of Pentecost in 1984. The ministry took him to Tamale, then to Karachi, Kwanta, to Liberia, and then to La Côte d'Ivoire, and then France from 1997 to 1998. And then to the headquarters of the church as the chairman of the church from 1998 to 2008. After successfully serving his term, Apostle Intumi was stationed in Germany as a missionary and the national head from 2008 to 2023. While serving as a missionary in France in 1998, Apostle to me was elected as the fourth chairman of the Church of Pentecost at age 40. Under his 10-year leadership as chairman, the church experienced exponential numerical growth, exponential numerical, spiritual, financial, and material growth, gaining global prominence. This caught the attention of the then President of the Republic, his Excellency President John Ajekum Kufo, to confer on him the prestigious order of the Volta Companion National Laurel. The Intumi administration was greeted with supernatural happenings in all facets of the church. In education, the church's then Bible college was upgraded to university status and known as Pentecost University College, now Pentecost University, the two Pentecost senior high schools in Koforudia and Kumasi, and other educational facilities were established. During the same period, the church's health frontiers were expanded by Apostle Dr. Michael Kwamna into me, whom we affectionately call Daddy, meant and still means to us. Nonetheless, we would still love to touch on some outstanding attributes he possessed that we saw with our very eyes and experienced firsthand. Daddy was a true definition of a man of God. We, his children, sought after a man who loved the Lord his God with all his heart, soul, and mind, and found our father worthy, as he was the embodiment of this verse and statement. He was indeed an exemplary minister of God's word. He carried integrity and upheld godly values wherever he found himself, whether publicly or privately. He was a God-fearing man who steadfastly held on to God when he was in the highest places where some people forget their God, as well as in his lowest moments of earthly pains and sufferings where some people would have cursed their God. Others may have shunned their faith just after some series of earthly afflictions they would have had to endure. Not him, though. His life depicted the practicality of walking and living in the fear of God with a pure heart and in great humility. We saw his faith blossom even when he was confined to a wheelchair. He taught us that when life happens and we find ourselves in painful situations we never imagined, this is when to remember that the power of God's love sustains us through it all. We learned with him as our example that our purpose in life is not to live as long as possible, but to live for Christ alone. As we often told him, the Lord uses life to serve as a shining example of how he desires to be served by his people in different life circumstances. While men received measures of faith as Christ apportioned, he received unwavering and limitless faith by the same to serve as a standard to many. In his condition, it would have been understandable to work less or even cease to work. Nonetheless, his life proved that there is no end to faith and that faith can mature though our flesh and strength may fail us. With that, he set an example for us and generations to come. Our father was a missionary and had extraordinary passion and zeal for the things of God. He traveled extensively around the globe to establish churches. 
During his almost 15 years of incapacitation, he, uh, he continued to author books with one finger in his wheelchair to provide a wealth of literature for future generations. Watching him serve God gave us the desire to serve as well. Although he was passionate about his service to God, he made sure to spend quality time with his family. Our father was indeed a family man. Despite his very busy schedule, he avoided falling into the trap of neglecting his wife and children. He made time to go with us on trips, jogging, to the bookstore, and so much more. Looking back, we can confidently say that many of our habits and passions were nursed and developed by the influence he had. He had a great love for people from all walks of life without favoritism or partiality. His genuine interest in what went on in our lives, even things we considered of little importance, was heartwarming and motivating. Whether it was about school, work, church, personal projects, our personal lives, or anything pertaining to us, he would thoroughly inquire and offer assistance or support. His counsel saved us many a time from making decisions that might have harmed us. He was our coach, gently pushing us to explore our own personalities while doing the right thing, all the while fully supporting us. The uncommon wisdom God gave him to deal with different issues was evident to all who came across him. He used it not only to work, not only for the work of the Lord, but also to bring up his family in the way of the Lord. As for his generosity, kindness, and welcoming spirit, is there anyone who did not know about them or experience them personally? We grew up seeing how he gave freely to all, be it to his biological or adopted children, even, and even those he did not personally know. An avid believer in people, he could identify talent in another and would not hesitate to invest in that person by giving advice, encouragement, financing education or projects, and so much more. Daddy made sure to honor us, his children, and went out of his way to accommodate us. There were many things he considered normal for parents to do for their children, which we found out were not so normal elsewhere. He had a policy to leave no one behind in the family and made certain to do everything within his power to ensure that we received all we needed to be well positioned in life. As his children, we saw firsthand what a loving husband he was to mommy. His love for her was clear to us, and in so many instances, he let us know how much he cherished her and was grateful to God for her. Our parents' 41 years of marriage and their richness of experience had been what his children were privileged to glean from. Both he and mommy have indeed demonstrated godly parenting to us and showed us how a godly family should function. We could expound on many other traits like his remarkable tenacity and endurance. Regardless of the context, his health condition, a goal to achieve, supporting his children among others, he kept going, holding on and not giving up, as he always had the end result in mind. During his years of difficulties, he always find, found the strength to keep his faith and even encouraged others. Then there is his love for books and literature, his adventurous spirit, and his sense of humor. There is so much more we could say about our daddy. His impact has been felt by many more people than he will ever know. This is the man we are talking about, who has joined the cloud of witnesses, who served his God and generation with all his heart, all his soul, and with all his might and mind. What a great honor to call the man, Apostle Dr. Michael Kobner into me, our father. Even though he is no longer with us, we feel his love guiding us and cheering us on. We, the children, shall always treasure him in our hearts. His grandchildren and great-grandchildren will know what a great man from whose bloodline they stem, and his legacy shall continue to live on in us forever. The way he lived is a standard that we strive to emulate. It is our prayer that our children and generations after us will find us faithful, just as we, his children, have found him faithful. May his soul rest in perfect peace. Wir lieben dich, Papa. Amen.